The Power of Full Engagement by Jim Lair and Tony Schwartz argues that managing our energy, not our time, is the true key to high performance and personal renewal. In our fast-paced digital world, the authors argue that time management is no longer an option. Being and becoming leaders who have abundant energy in the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual spheres of our lives is where it's at if we want to be more engaged and have a more engaged team. They rightly state that there are only so many hours in a day, but the quality and quantity of energy available to us is not. The book has two main parts and 11 chapters. We will focus on the big ideas from each chapter and deliver a look at the book's best ideas. We begin our review with the idea of the corporate athlete. The authors of the book first learned about managing energy in the field of professional sports. In their work with sports players, they found that it wasn't so much skills that helped their sports clients meet challenges, but that energy is the X factor that makes it possible to ignite talent and skill. They help these athletes manage their energy more effectively in service of whatever mission they were on. They then discovered that the performance demands that most people face in their everyday work environments over time dwarfed those of any of the professional athletes that they had trained. In service of finding ways to sustain great performance and energy for those in the business and professional world, they created the concept of the corporate athlete. These four key energy management principles are what's behind becoming what they call a corporate athlete. They are 1. Full engagement requires drawing on four separate but related sources of energy. Physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Physical energy is measured from low to high, and emotional capacity is measured from negative to positive. High positive equals fully engaged. Two. Because overuse and underuse diminish energy capacity, we must balance energy expenditure with intermittent energy renewal. Sadly, recovery is often viewed as a weakness rather than a need for sustained performance. The ability to fully engage with the challenges at hand and to periodically disengage and seek renewal characterize the most productive and happy people. We must learn to live our lives as a series of sprints not marathons. 3. To build capacity, we must push beyond our normal limits, training in a systematic way like elite athletes. We grow by expending energy beyond our ordinary limits and then recovering. To meet increased demand, we must learn to systematically build and strengthen muscles where our capacity is insufficient. When stress is followed by adequate recovery, it can make us stronger. 4. Positive energy rituals, highly specific routines for managing energy, are the key to full engagement and sustained high performance. If you must think about something each time you do it, you probably won't keep it up for long. In contrast, a positive ritual becomes automatic behavior over time. Unlike will and discipline, which require pushing, a ritual pulls at you and requires less energy. Creating rituals tied to our values helps us conserve energy and freeze creative energy. Next up, balancing stress and recovery. Balancing stress and recovery is critical to high performance of individuals and organizations. We live in a world that celebrates work and activity, ignores renewal and recovery, and fails to recognize that sustained high performance demands both. We must learn to establish stopping points inviolate time to step off the track, cease processing information, and shift our attention from achievement to restoration. As human beings, we spend and recover energy, a process called oscillation. Too much expenditure without sufficient recovery leads to burnout and breakdown. Too much recovery without sufficient stimuli and stress leads to atrophy and weakness. Ultradian rhythms, 90 to 120 minute cycles, help account for the ebb and flow of our energy throughout the day. Energy is high, then wanes, and the body begins to crave rest and recovery. It's best to listen to it and work with the cycles, not against them. To build capacity, we must systematically expose ourselves to more stress, followed by adequate recovery. Challenging a muscle past its current limits prompts a phenomenon known as supercompensation. Faced with a demand that exceeds the muscle's current capacity, the body responds by building more muscle fibers in anticipation of the next stimulus. This is true of all levels and dimensions of our being. 
understanding how to cultivate and relate to energy in all four dimensions, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, is crucial. We'll pull out the author's key ideas on each. Let's start with physical energy. Physical energy. Our physical energy is our fundamental source of fuel, feeding all other areas of our lives. Eat and drink. Eat five to six small, nutritious meals to sustain energy throughout your day. Drink at least 64 ounces of water each day. Take recovery breaks every 90 to 120 minutes, alternating between work and rest, such as a 10 to 20 minute break. Breathe. A simple antidote to anger and anxiety is abdominal breathing, which both summons energy and triggers relaxation. Breathe in through your diaphragm, meaning your abdomen moves more than your upper chest, to a count of three, out to a count of six. Repeat three to five times. This quiets the body, mind, and emotions. Sleep. Sleep is our most important source of renewal. Ignore myths and people who brag about how little sleep they get. Make sure you get seven to eight hours a night. Next, emotional energy. Emotional intelligence is simply the capacity to manage emotions skillfully in the service of high positive energy and full engagement. These muscles fuel self-confidence, self-control, interpersonal effectiveness, and empathy. To perform at our best, we must access pleasant and positive emotions. The experience of enjoyment, challenge, adventure, and opportunity. Pleasure is a critical ingredient in sustained performance. Negative emotions serve our survival instincts, but at a cost. In the context of performance, they are energy inefficient. The heart of effective management is the ability to communicate consistently positive energy. The heart of effective leadership is the ability to summon positive emotions during periods of intense stress. Any activity that is enjoyable, fulfilling, and affirming serves as a source of emotional renewal and recovery. We move on to mental energy. Mental capacity is what we use to organize our lives and focus our attention. Realistic optimism is the mental energy that best serves full engagement. See the world as it is, but always work positively toward a desired outcome or solution. Changing mental channels activates different parts of the brain and facilitates creativity. Negative thoughts may help to direct attention to important but unmet needs, such as food, rest, and emotional support. If we heed these signals, they can be useful. Thinking uses up a lot of energy. The key is to give the thinking mind rest. Where and when do you get your best ideas? Rarely is it when we are at work. And lastly, spiritual energy. Spiritual equals the connection to a deeply held set of values and to a purpose beyond our self-interest. Character fuels our spiritual energy, the courage and conviction to live by our values, even when doing so requires personal sacrifice and hardship. The capacity to live this way depends on regularly renewal-seeking ways to rest and rejuvenate and to reconnect with the values we find most inspiring and meaningful. Spiritual energy is sustained in balancing a commitment to a purpose beyond ourselves with adequate self-care. Spiritual energy propels action in all dimensions of our lives. It fuels passion, perseverance, and commitment. At any given moment, how much energy we have to spend reflects our physical capacity. Our motivation to spend that energy is largely a spiritual issue. Expanding spiritual capacity requires subordinating our own needs to something beyond self-interest. Self-absorption ultimately drains energy and impedes our performance. The more preoccupied we are with our own fears and concerns, the less energy we have available to take positive action. Three principles create the foundation to keep our energy, our most valuable asset, abundant and high quality. They are purpose, truth, and action. We now delve into each of these concepts. Purpose. Purpose drives full engagement by prompting our desire to invest focused energy in a particular activity or goal. We feel fully engaged only when we care deeply, when we feel what we do really matters. To be meaningful, a value must influence choices we make in our everyday lives. 
A values-driven life increases the likelihood that you will bring passion, commitment, and perseverance to whatever you do. Purpose becomes a more powerful and enduring source of energy when its source moves from negative to positive, external to internal, and self to others, the authors say. Intrinsic motivation is one example. When we engage in an activity because we value it for the inherent satisfaction it provides, we are being purposeful. We feel more passion for and derive more pleasure from doing what we freely choose and most enjoy. This creates more energy that fuels you for the long haul. Truth. Facing the truth is the second stage of becoming more engaged. Doing so frees up energy in your work life. When you are denying what is so, you disengage and shut down part of yourself. Avoiding the truth may numb us from the pain, but it also cuts us off from freely and fully engaging in the world. Accepting our limitations reduces our defensiveness and increases the amount of positive energy available to us. Avoiding the truth does the opposite. It consumes great effort and energy. We get stuck rationalizing, intellectualizing, or projecting our own faults onto others. Facing the truth requires we retain ongoing openness to the possibility that we may not be seeing ourselves or others accurately. Action. Blair and Schwartz talk about action in terms of rituals. Ensuring a balance between energy expenditure and energy renewal in the service of full engagement is the most important role of rituals. They are tools through which we can effectively manage energy in service of whatever mission we are on. Rituals allow us to translate our values into consistent action, which leads to more consistent rituals. They provide a framework and stable structure for creative breakthroughs. The more challenges and pressure you face, the more you need to pay attention to your rituals. When creating rituals, focus on one significant change at a time and keep it manageable. Pay attention. If and when a ritual begins to feel empty or stale, it perhaps has lost its connection to deeply held values. This has been our review of The Power of Full Engagement by Jim Lair and Tony Schwartz. This book will help you sharpen the saw over and over again and help you stay engaged and productive, enjoying your work and life. Thanks for watching and leave us a comment below to let us know what you think.